Welcome to USF 2000 AI League Season 3 Race 23 here from Interlagos, Brazil. The championship is almost coming to an end. I think the championship will be decided by today, August 4th, if you're keeping up with it, which I don't think really anyone is, but anyway. <laughs> um... And I guess since we're so close... Oh, and Ethan went off track. I don't know what that was, but... Okay. Let's take a quick look at your championship coming in. The championship is getting closer with Jack Daniels and Karl Marx. Very closer together. Only about 37 points separate them now. As Jack Daniels just isn't conserving fuel right. McFarlane still up there in third. Christensen past Hubbard as he goes up into fourth. Hubbard drops down to fifth. And only the top five are still currently eligible for the championship. And that also means that Jack Daniels has locked up rookie of the year. Tom O'Laughlin is not close enough. Um... Standings stay relatively the same until you get to Dylan Pettigrew, who won at Martinsville, Leaped Frog, Icy Cow, and Big Bob. Uh, and then it stays the same all the way down to Chad Broski. Finally got past Edgelord. So Broski is now not last in the championship. Nobody has set a lap time just yet. Currently still waiting. Seems like a lot of cars have already went off track. So this track may be pretty difficult for the drivers. It has a good combination of fast, full throttle turns and slow, hard braking zones. Currently, we're showing Brennan Hubbard, who is the last driver still eligible for the championship. He wants to keep up the streak of three championships in a row where he's eligible going into the season finale. And then Tom O'Laughlin, you see right there in front of him, not eligible to win Rookie of the Year this season. That honor goes to Jack Daniels who has already locked up Rookie of the Year, but he has not locked up the championship. In fact, it's actually getting closer. So, McFarland and Broski are first people to set lap times. McFarland sets a 140-0. Don't know how official those times are. We're going to have to keep up with them. Big Bob goes up into third. You have a little group of cars over here. Going into turn four, but now into five. Ethan Marks goes second. Edgelord goes fifth. But yeah, don't know how official these times are. Karl Marx goes second, about two seconds off of McFarland. Um, here comes O'Laughlin and Hubbard. I think they're going to be setting lap speeds. O'Laughlin goes second, Hubbard goes third. As McFarland is actually slower, so I do think these times are accurate times. Tom O'Laughlin currently third as Chad Broski goes second with a 140.8. No one's really gotten close to McFarland so far. Jack Daniels went eighth. 
Christensen goes fifth. Pettigrew goes fourth. Big Bob goes up to 10th, currently inside the top 10. Still waiting on Icy Cow, Jack Steersman, Snoop Dogg, and Baguette Boy to set a lap. As Baguette Boy, right, as I said, it goes second, but it's still about half a second off of McFarland. Uh, Marks goes third as Steersman goes 15th. Carl Marks, he needs a good day today as he's closing in on Jack Daniels. He's got two races left without double points, and then Auto Club has double points. As Jack Daniels goes first place with a 139.8. As now John Christensen goes first with a 139.801. Beat out Daniels by about two hundredths. As Big Bob goes 10th. Currently, your Farvest Down Championship contender is Brendan Hubbard in ninth, about one and a half seconds off of Christensen. Still waiting on Snoop Dogg and Icy Cow to set laps. Snoop Dogg's getting pretty close on the track map, and then Icy Cow. I cannot find him on the track map, so he may be in pit lane. Yeah, Icy Cow's in pit lane. He's not going to be setting a lap in practice. A couple seconds left in practice. Tom O'Laughlin will not be able to set another lap, as he was pretty close. He's just gonna have to set this lap, and then we'll need to wait... Tom O'Laughlin does go fourth. Hubbard goes up to fifth, making the Farvest Down Championship contender Carl Marks in seventh. Snoop Dogg goes 15th. As Chad Broski goes first with a 139.649, as Daniels hops up to second with a 139.692. Bone goes up to 10th. As Christensen leapfrogs back into first place by a, almost half a second. A 139.124. So I think in qualifying we're going to need to be watching out for those 139s as Big Bob jumps up to fourth with a 139.948. Big Bob just got knocked out of the top 10 in points. Edgelord goes up to 13th. Carl Marks, the last guy to have been able to set a lap time. He is coming across. Now we're going to see if he can improve. Doesn't go anywhere. So Christensen wins another practice. He's been showing excellent speed later this season. 
I do have reason to believe that this will be his final season. Doesn't seem like he's interested in doing any more races. As now, it's qualifying time, your favorite part of the day. Actually, no, mine's for race, but qualifying's fun anyways. Edgelord instantly comes out of the pits as no one else has even went to the track yet, so he'll probably be the first one to be able to set a lap time. Seems like we have five sectors. Is he is in the grass. Why was he in the grass? He wasn't even side by side with anyone. Did the car just get loose and he accidentally went off track? Did Was he not paying attention? Is that going to be an issue we're going to have to look out for in the race? Brendan Hubbard has now just left the pits. Farland exiting pit road right now. Edgelord is now starting his qualifying attempt. Edgelord now showing up on our screen. We're gonna have to see so about 27 seconds for the first sector. Second sector seems to be about 42 seconds. Third sector is about a minute four. About a minute 19. And then the final sector is about probably going to be about 139, 140, 141, somewhere around there. Car Mark's currently in the pink right now. He goes pink again in the second sector. He's also chasing Hubbard on track right now. As Edgelord, 143.669. That will probably not stick. We're gonna have to keep up. Hubbard... Let's see what he can do in the third sector. He goes green as Marx goes green. So somebody did set a better third sector on their outlap. But Marx currently showing strong pace. I think he may actually be gonna he's may actually get a draft from Hubbard on the straightaway if he can keep up with him. 
but I think Hubbard could get a draft off of Snoop Dogg right up ahead. Marks goes yellow in the fourth sector, so he may be slowing down a bit. He's got the time to beat, 143. He goes pink, and that's a first place as Marks will top him with a 140.8. Steersman is going to be up next to come across the line. All greens. But you need to show some pinks. Bob McFarland and Dylan Pettigrew currently have some pinks on the board. As checkered flag is already out for qualifying. So Marks and Hubbard will get another chance to go around. But the guys that just crossed now won't. As Bob McFarland goes P1 with a 140.091. Dylan Pettigrew, he had a pink, he goes first place with a 139.836. O'Laughlin goes third. Edgelord, what does he got? He's got a yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow. He'll stay the same. His baguette boy goes up into sixth. Alfredo Saucy now tops that going into sixth. Jack Daniels only goes seventh. He's going to have to do a lot of digging, but we know he can do it. Bone goes 10th, Icy Cow, he comes across the line, he'll go 12th, Big Bob, he will go 10th, still waiting on Snoop Dogg, Chad Broski, and John Christensen to set lap times, but they're all on track, except I don't think Broski will be able to set a lap, I think he went out a little too late. Mark's currently in the double pink. What does he have? He's getting a draft. Christensen goes sixth. Marks goes third. Snoop Dogg goes ninth. As they will not be able to set a lap time. For Chad Broski at least. So, going into this final race. Well, not final. The Three races left. Bleh. Um, just people gotta be going for those positions. So, without further ado, let's look at your starting grid. Three races left. Row one: Dylan Pettigrew and Bob McFarland. McFarland, he's gonna need to go. All out on the start. I think it's a standing start if I can remember. Karl Marx and Tom O'Laughlin make up row two. As Hubbard and Christensen will be in row three. Uh, currently fifth and fourth in the standings. Row four we have Alfredo Saucy and Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels he may be starting a little farther back than he would have liked. He is the farthest back championship contender but... We've seen some pretty great performances from him this season. Let's see what he can do at the start. Snoop Dogg and Baguette Boy are going to be starting in row 5. Edgelord uh, had a pretty good qualifying for his standards. He'll be 11th, Big Bob 12th. And then row 7, we have Bone and Steersman. And then... In row 8, we have Icy Cow and Ethan Martz, and then Chad Broski did not set a lap time. He'll be starting all the way in the back. This, this race is going to be very intense for the drivers up in the front. There's going to be a lot of battles just to win. Uh, let's look at your race info for today. As usual, 78 degrees. Uh, track temp, 80 degrees. So it's pretty warm there. A uh, pretty high altitude here at this track compared to what we were at, at Martinsville. Uh, yeah, we are. This is the first time Interlagos, well, the first time USF 2000 AI League has visited South America. South America is the fourth concert continent to be represented in USF 2000 AI League history as we are on the outskirts of Sao Paulo, Brazil.
So all the cars are lined up, but how they are lined up, it seems like um, Dylan Pettigrew will actually be on the outside going into turn one, but he will be starting a little farther up. He's going to need to get that nose pointed to the inside line. So yeah, you can see that all the championship contenders are within the top seven spots. The only two starting in the top seven that aren't is Dylan Pettigrew, who's on the pole. He also won at Martinsville and Iowa this season. So we may have a little bit of a short track dominator. And then Tom O'Loughlin, who still has not been able to get that one win that he needs. He's still winless in USF 2000 AI League. He's one of the few that do not have any wins. The only other guys in the grid I can think of are Big Bob and Edgelord. I don't think they've ever gotten a win. Pettigrew's got three wins under his belt. McFarlane's got some wins. Mark's got some wins. Laughlin does not. Hubbard actually has the most wins in U.S. Actually, no, he's tied with Christensen. I think they have seven each. Alfredo Saucy only has one win, and that came at Sebring in Season 2. Jack Daniels, we know, has several wins, as they're actually getting ready to go now. Everybody's ready. Green, green, green. As lights go off and we are away here at Interlagos. Good start for Pettigrew. Good start for McFarland. Comes up to block Marks. O'Laughlin on the inside of Marks. Pettigrew leads us down very nicely. Charging into turn four. Christensen currently trying to get by O'Laughlin for fourth. He clears him. As Daniels has went up one spot, your biggest mover already. Zephan Martz and Jack Steersman going up three spots from their original starting position. Pettigrew got a good launch. He's already up to about a second and a half lead. Beware of the competition caution. It'll probably come out around lap six. As Hubbard now needs to defend from Daniels. Daniels is going to get a good run from this front stretch. Very long. See, they're a little spread out at the front of the grid. Back here, they're still battling for position as Martz, <laughs> very aggressive on trying to pass Snoop Dogg. Hubbard's got to try and create a gap between him and Daniels. He's currently on the cut line of not being eligible for the championship. He's got to just stay ahead as he almost got by O'Laughlin going into turn four. He looked to the inside, could not get it done. As up at the front, they're actually getting pretty close to each other. Pettigrew gained the gap, but I think McFarlane's now beating him. His baguette boy almost got by Daniels. Daniels has a hungry driver right behind him. Season 2 champion. Not eligible for the championship this season. Joined late. 
back here, Edgelord already has lost four spots since the start. Mm, just another race not going his way. As Hubbard is right behind O'Laughlin, what can he do? McFarlane faster than Pettigrew that lap and sets the fastest lap. Hubbard gonna try and go the long way around. It does not work. He will not get the pass done. We're already on lap three. Alfredo Saucy currently trying to hunt down Baguette Boy. Very close together is up near the front. Christensen's battling with Marks. Is right behind them. There's a battle between Hubbard and O'Laughlin. Pettigrew now started to extend his lead again. He's over a two second lead. as Daniels has now closed in on Hubbard. Hubbard is hanging on for dear life now. He does not want to fall behind Daniels. Time's running out in the championship. He cannot let Daniels go by. Pettigrew sets the fastest lap with a 138.498. Christensen tried looking to go around. Marks did not work. Hubbard still just trying to hold him off. Currently your biggest mover is Chad Broski up four spots since the start. Hubbard has now caught up to O'Laughlin and Christensen. Christensen could not get around Marks. Pretty much glued together these three right now. Brennan's just got to get around O'Laughlin, but O'Laughlin, obviously, he does not want to be passed. As Alfredo Saucy has gone off track. In one of the final turns at hard braking zone before the front stretch. Hubbard still battling with O'Laughlin. Next lap will be the competition caution, so then everyone will come in for the pit stop, and they're gonna need to conserve fuel because, boy, that's been an issue for drivers in this series so far, of not being able to conserve all the way to the end. As Daniel's now trying to make a move on Hubbard, he's going to think otherwise and will stay behind. He almost tried to send it into turn four. That would not work. He's going to stay with him. Um, trying to peek around. Can't get by. Going to need to stay in that draft. Broski now up five spots, got around even Martz. And then Edgelord has lost five spots since the start.
Christensen is closing in on Marks. Getting pretty close up here. Oh, well, Laughlin almost gets run off the track. As the Laughlin actually set the fastest lap with a 138.342. As it is now time to prove a competition caution. The competition caution is now out. Right as Icy Cow almost got around Edge Lord. Pettigrew currently out in front over McFarland, Marks, Christensen, O'Loughlin. Jack Daniels actually started eighth. They have caught up to the pace car, I'd assume. Pit stops will happen this lap. Oh! Seems like there's been an issue in the back. Right here, what happened? Seems like Steersman stacked everybody up. What did Steersman do? Oh, just locked up the brakes under yellow, flung it deep into the turn. And then everybody just kind of stacked up. I don't know why the drivers didn't just think to go around, but... Okay. Um, so now several drivers are out. I think they got damaged from the accident. May have hit the car in front. Snoop Dogg, Broski, and Ethan Martz. All are currently out. Because Steersman locked up the brakes under yellow. They come. I think they're going to pit this lap. As yes, they will. We're going to have to see what everyone will be able to do.
Pettigrew's gonna pull into his pit stall all the way down. What's his time gonna be on pit road? McFarlane's gonna beat him out as he is actually going to get past a lot as he finally comes out. I don't know if he beat Daniels out. It got really close. He has a cone stuck to him now. There goes the cone. But he may have just fallen to fifth. Jack Daniels went up a few spots as now McFarland is your leader. Your best pit stop was a 7.6 from Bob McFarland. Your worst pit stop was a 12.5 from Pettigrew. Some other good pit stops, there was an 8.5 from Marks, an 8.4 from Icy Cow. Um, a couple 8.8s from Daniels and Big Bob. Pettigrew now down to fifth. As your top five now is McFarland, Marks, Christensen, Daniels, and Pettigrew. It does seem like Daniels barely beat out Pettigrew, but not by much. Biggest mover now is Big Bob up six spots. And your biggest loser is Snoop Dogg down six spots, but if the car's still on track, that'd be Pettigrew. Lost four on the pit stop. Now, even though McFarland's out in front, he still could very well lose it. Just because maybe bad pit strategy, we've seen it in a lot of the recent races. Gonna be going green next time, I would assume.
starting to get closer to the start finish line. We will be going green this time. The lights on the pace car are out. The top four are all championship contenders. The other one is Brennan Hubbard, who got knocked all the way down to eighth. So he's going to need to start clawing his way through the field on the restart. Here we go, slowly starting to accelerate. Pace car pulls off. Green, green, green. As green flag is back out, the car is instantly fan out. Seems like we have two lanes going all the way down into the first turn. Oh, don't crash. Christensen to the inside of Marks. But Marks will battle back through the Senna S. Christensen gonna try and follow McFarland. It's here. Oh, very close racing. Pettigrew to the inside of Daniels. Don't think he got the pass done, though. He did not, as it got very close. Looked like he was about to touch. Big Bob hanging on to six. As McFarland locks up a little. Christensen taking advantage on that. He closed in just a little bit. Oh, almost side by side. Still chasing each other. Now remember, they have to keep fuel conservation in their minds. Gotta have a good pitch strategy. As now Christensen... Under fire from Marks. Daniels is getting caught by Pettigrew. He wants his spot back. Marks in the draft. It's gonna be side by side coming to the line. Pettigrew almost does the crossover on Daniels. He's actually going to go side by side anyways. Can't get the pass done. Marks cannot get the pass done on Christensen either. Christensen actually closed back into McFarland. Very close racing happening here in the front. Marks has to stay in front of Daniels if he really wants to go for the championship. Christensen pops out. No pass. Top five all relatively close together. Marks right behind Christensen on his heels. Gotta get around him because he has Daniels right behind him who is ready to pass. But Daniels is under fire from Pettigrew. Stay in the draft. As Daniels now under fire from Pettigrew again, he's going to try and stay with it. Daniels taking a very defensive line. As, oh, McFarland has crashed. Whoa. <laughs> two different woes for two different situations. Bob McFarland has fallen.
what happened here. As Bob, as Big Bob got by Dylan Pettigrew, I don't know how that happened. Oh, same thing that Jack Steersman did. Locked it up. Another mistake. As Big Bob did actually get by Dylan Pettigrew. Pettigrew's still trying to chase him. I think he may have just saw McFarland and may have backed off a little and Big Bob caught him. That is not what McFarland needed to do if he wanted to win this championship. There's still lots of time left in the race though. Steersman has went off track. Steersman has gone off track in one of the final turns. You can see it on our track map. Look for the number nine all the way at the back. Must have gotten off track. As now Pettigrew almost got passed by O'Laughlin. He keeps leaving the door open. And he keeps almost getting past. He's gonna, he has to get around Big Bob. As Hubbard's gonna try and need to make a move on O'Laughlin. O'Laughlin takes a defensive line. Pettigrew right behind Big Bob as Big Bob has gone off track. Big Bob locked up the wheels. What looked to be very promising for the 66. He seems to be stuck. Oh no, just an another lockup situation. Came back on track, but now he is far behind. Alfredo Saucy trying to get around Hubbard. Hubbard's trying to get around O'Laughlin. These three pretty close together. Big Bob now back to 13th after what could have been a top five finish on a road course, which he hasn't been able to do yet. At least that, from what I'm sure. As McFarland has now caught up to Alfredo Saucy. As Hubbard, staying in the draft of O'Laughlin, he's going to take a look. Smoothly through the turn, O'Laughlin will keep his position. This V4 right here, very close and competitive. As Bone got by, Baguette Boy. Lap 14, 23, we're going to be coming to lap 15 very soon. This race has been going by pretty quick. Hubbard trying to look around O'Laughlin can't get it done a lot of attempted passing happening today seems to be more racy than what we had at Laguna Seca
see a puff of smoke up ahead. Just a lot of these heavy breaking zones that people just haven't been able to perfect. That one tight turn right before the front stretch. That has been having a lot of issues. Turn four, turn one. Turn one is what got McFarland. Who's now trying to battle his way through the field. He needs to get around Saucy. Front is pretty equally spread. They've been pretty spread about the same distance for a while. Marks may actually be slowing, well, catching Christensen. Alfredo Saucy just produced his fastest lap with 139.1177. Farland still just trying to stay in that draft. He's got to make moves. Not close enough to get the pass done this time. Farland definitely outbroke him into that turn. This is about for seventh, by the way, if you did not know. Farland is pacing a little bit faster than him this lap. We got some interesting battles up at the front. Marks closed in on Christensen a lot that lap is. It seems like Big Bob may have went off track again a little bit ago. Marks is actually catching Christensen. I think Marks had a really good lap because he actually pulled very far away from Daniels. That fourth sector, that's a big number. Marks just pulled his fastest lap as Daniels pulled one of his slowest as Broski has went off track. Currently 15th as Marx is now very close. Caught him a lot in that sector. Now down to about half a second. As then Christensen beat him in that sector. It's a game of cat and mouse. This is what happened to Christensen at Hockenheim. He was just really good in some sectors, and then in some sectors, he was just really bad. And then he was able to hold off Daniels, and then Daniels didn't conserve fuel right. And, yeah. So, while these drivers are being very aggressive up here, they have to keep in their minds that they still have to watch their fuel and make sure they can make it to the end. We have back here Pettigrew chasing down Daniels. Gonna try and get a podium. Very close. What's Pettigrew gonna do going into turn four? How aggressive will he be? Will he be aggressive at all? Daniels taking a defensive line. As he locks up a little, 
saw a little bit of smoke, and then we saw up near the front with Christensen marks that they were having. That's one of them had issues. Pettigrew trying to make a move on Daniels. Still not being able to, but is definitely putting the pressure on him. Marks trying to close in on Christensen. He's going to get a run coming on to the front stretch. O'Laughlin has just gone off track. He's losing a couple positions. He went off on that fast turn right there as Marks side by side with Christensen. Here they go down into turn one. Christensen in the better lane. Marks going to go around the outside. He's going to have the inside on the next turn as Marks will get the pass done. Make it P1 for Karl Marks. As O'Laughlin may have damaged his car on pit road back there. But now we've seen how a pass could be done as Christensen... Now going to try and come back. Marks locks it up a little bit. Medium speed corner right back there. Daniels is now closing in on Christensen. Daniels still has to watch out for Pettigrew, who's right behind him. Four to go. There's your top four right there. Hubbard just turned one of his fastest laps. Daniel's still trying to catch Christensen. Staying right where he needs to. Putting the pressure on him now. Currently your biggest mover is Icy Cow up seven spots. Since the start. Started 15th. Christensen's still trying to keep with Marks, and then Pettigrew's also back there. And then it's a little while before you get to Hubbard. Christensen now within about half a second. Trying to keep up. Now we're starting to get into the range of will anyone need to pit in terms of pit strategy. As Christensen actually pulled him in a lot. Pettigrew's now on the back of Daniels. What will Christensen be able to do going into turn four? Marks takes a defensive line. Daniels keeps his defensive line. But he's just been able to recreate every single time. And it has worked every single time as he'll keep Pettigrew behind him once again. 
But they're still very close to each other. These two groups up at the front. Christensen wants the lead back. He's just got to find a good place to pass. They're still keeping close to each other. This is usually where cars would start pitting if they couldn't make it to the end on fuel. We have to keep an eye out. Looked like Marx was about to pull in, but he did not. He was just running a very inside line. You, that you are able to run as Marx locks up the brake, goes wide into turn one. Is back here, Christensen's trying to hold off Daniels. Two to go. This would be the lap where people would pit if they can't make it to the end. Christensen still trying to hold off Daniels. Pettigrew kind of fell behind the group a little bit. This is for second place. Christensen's now closed in on Marks. The front three cars are all together. Marks locks up the brakes a little bit, goes a little bit wide. Not too far wide, though. He'll stay in first as the top four, all very close, all within a second and a half. Marks locks it up again. He's struggling with the tires. Christensen gonna stay in the draft. Will they need to pit though? Or are they all gonna be able to make it to the end? If they all make it to the end, this could be a very close finish. They're all within a second. Here they go. None of them pit. They're all gonna be able to make it to the end. Pettigrew trying to get around Daniels. They're swerving. Christensen Going to try and go the long way around Marks. It doesn't work. Daniels is going to get around Christensen. But Christensen's going to battle back on the inside. Daniels will get the inside again. Still side by side back there. But Christensen will hold on. But Daniels does not hold on as he leaves the door open for Pettigrew. As Pettigrew will take third place and now into the podium places as Marks locks up a little bit. What a finish this is going to be. Christensen closing in. Daniels trying to get around Pettigrew. What can Christensen do? Does he have anything left for him? I don't think there's much left for Christensen to get by. Daniels still trying to get around Pettigrew again. Karl Marx trying to stay ahead. You see in the back there, Pettigrew trying desperately to hold off Daniels. Don't mess it up in this turn. For, hang off for dear life. Heavy braking. Christensen needs to follow closely. He's following as close as he can. This is going to be the finish we are all waiting to see. Christensen right behind Pettigrew in third. The top three all together. Pettigrew side by side with Christensen. Christensen tries to go side by side with Marx. Here they go. They cannot do it as it is going to be Karl Marx that wins at Interlagos. As Daniels shoots pretty hard in the breaking. They're, they're side by side. <laughs> Whoa. What a finish. Ooh. That's got to be one of the best road course racing finishes in this series, ever. Karl Marx gets another win.
he'll now earn about 18 points more than Daniels. The championship, it is getting close going into these final couple races. As Edgelord has now went off track, so it's Steersman after the checkered flag. Uh-oh. <laughs> What a, what a race. Brazil, Interlagos, Interlagos does not disappoint. The middle got a little boring, but that finish though, all four cars, very close. Hubbard even caught up near the end. Now, after what that was, Take a look at your finishing results. See how close it was. 0 0.132. That's very close. That may actually be our closest road course finish. I'll need to check that. I know Red Bull Ring in season... Red Bull Ring this season. It was one of the first couple of races. Was very close. Uh, checking how close that was right now. This race is barely a little bit farther apart than the Red Bull Ring. I think Red Bull Ring, it was Marks versus Daniels. But Christensen will finish second. Pettigrew will finish third. Daniels will finish fourth. The top four all within a second. Hubbard will get fifth. Alfredo Saucy sixth. Bob McFarland, what started to be a really good day, ended up finishing very rough. He'll finish seventh. Bone gets a very quiet day. Icy Cow, he gained a lot of spots. I think the most, he went up six. He'll finish ninth. Baguette Boy will finish tenth. Also very quiet day. Big Bob, what could have been a very good day, ended up being very bad. He'll finish eleventh. Edgelord, twelfth. Steersman will finish a lap down in thirteenth. O'Laughlin, we, had, we saw had some issues. He'll finish fourteenth. Broski, Snoop Dogg, Ethan Martz, we saw them all get caught up in the Steersman accident. They also finished a lap down. Just what a race here from Interlagos. Um, definitely going to have to be a place we're going to need to return to for Season 4. Because that was just amazing. Um, two races left to in the season, both in California, both in the Los Angeles area. We're going to hit Long Beach next race, which will be USF 2000 AI League's first ever street course. Very tight turns, narrow track, and then we're going to go to the complete opposite at Auto Club, fast, wide, which will determine our championship. Both of those races will probably be filmed sometime today. I'd say Long Beach, maybe mid-afternoon, and then Auto Club sometime at night. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Um, uh, I'm just it's kind of shocked that right, that finish was really great. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.